James Carafano joins me now. Uh, James, as we've been hearing now, Israel's military chief has warned that the war to end Hamas is going to last, quote, many months. Uh, U.S. support for this, there's already been pressure to perhaps scale back. Israel is going to do what it's going to do. But if this does drag out for many months, how does that impact U.S. support, do you think? Well, I, I don't think U.S. support is the driving factor here. I mean, the U.S. is really trapped. It can't not support Israel. I mean, the last thing this president yeah. could afford to do is to see a defeat in Israel. The driving factor is going to be internal Israeli domestic support for the war. That's going to determine how long they fight. And I think the months thing, it's a statement. I, I, I think it could be as much a negotiating mm. tactic as a, uh, as a prognosis. Realistically, James, uh, they can't eliminate Hamas, right? There'll always be a vacuum, and there's always going to be someone to fill it. Well, the, the reality is, is unless, unless you deal with Iran, the Hamas problem will always come back. You know, in the short term, the quickest yep. way to de-escalate this conflict is for the United States to aggressively attack both the Houthis and the surrogates. And then Iran will get the message, it will back off, and then Hamas will cut a deal and release the hostages, and we'll move on to the next phase. I'm glad you said that, because I was going to follow up. There have been 100 attacks on our troops in the Middle East since October. Three military service members injured in a, a recent one uh, at our base in Iraq. We have responded with a strike of our own. But I guess the question to you, James, is are these responses strong enough? Is Tehran getting any message? Yeah. Well, I think the tit-for-tat thing is a huge mistake, because what's going to happen is eventually Something mm. really horrible is going to happen. A lot of American service members are going to die in a bay. I look, I don't want this to, I mean, this is a terrible thing. Or an American ship is going to get mm. sank or something. Something really, really bad. And then the U.S. will be forced to respond. And, that, and that's the problem, is you want to drive the competition. You want to be ahead of the other guy. And so by letting the other guy set the pace of this, you're always reacting. And, and so the right answer for the U.S., and, and look, I, I know the administration knows this, it's just this is not how they do business. The right answer would be to whack these guys and, and send a really strong message. But they know it's the one thing we won't do until we're backed into a corner. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the line always out of the White House is, well, we just don't want to escalate this war and allow it to spread. But uh, without actually taking decisive action to combat this, uh, nothing changes, right? Yeah, look, I don't mean to be critical of our, our administration, but here's, here's the root of the problem. These are the same people that were in the Obama administration, including the president. They follow the exact mm. same playbook, which is minimal response until things are completely out of control, and then try to deal with it and take credit if World War III doesn't start. And so the problem is, is when you go into a game and the other guy has your playbook ahead of time and you follow your playbook to the letter, it allows them to decide how and when to escalate and when to call it off. And this is, this is the problem, because the more restraint we show, the more likelihood things could spin out of control. How do you think this will play out, James? It's a difficult question. Who knows? But does this escalate? Do we see more conflict in other areas in the Middle East? How do you see it playing out? Well, I mean, the, the, the one thing that would, is the most dangerous, of course, is the, the explosion of a second front. And, you know, we've been in this mm. for many, many weeks. We see no signs of that. So there's, there's very little likelihood that Iran is going to blow this into a big regional war. That's true. Having said that, they're, gonna, they're, le they're kind of eking out everything in this they can before they let you down. And, and then while this is going on, and this mm. is the one thing nobody's really paying attention to, they could well declare a nuclear breakout. And then here's President Biden mm. walking into a election with a, new, with a declared Iran nuclear state saying, oh, the region's so terrible, we have to do this to defend ourselves. What is he going to do? It's the worst possible scenario for the White House. Right. Well, on that happy note, but James Carafrano, thank you so much, James. Always full of knowledge and insight. We appreciate it.